clothes. You can either draw it too simple or too complicated. In this video, we're gonna learn how to draw clothes correctly. Before we get onto the video, just a quick disclaimer that I'm not an expert. In fact, I don't really have a lot of experience in drawing clothing because I don't draw clothes with my characters very often. Anyway, this video will be divided into three parts. First, I'm gonna break down how it works, then we're gonna learn how to draw it, and then the last part will be about how we can color clothes. So I'll be putting them into timestamps. Before we begin, make sure to like this video and subscribe if you haven't already. Before we actually draw anything, we gotta understand how clothes work. A lot of people draw clothes from imagination just because they're too lazy to go on Pinterest and find a reference. And you may be making this mistake as well. Trust me, I've been there. Believe it or not, clothes do not look like this on boobas. Well, maybe sometimes. It honestly just depends on the material that your clothes are made of and how tight it is. Just keep two things in mind triangles and gravity. Okay, so generally clothes look like this, but it gets a little more complicated when we wear them because A, gravity, and B, the surface isn't even. Some parts are flat, some parts are sticking out, and some parts are tucked in. So because of gravity, the clothes are being pulled down. It looks as if there's actually weight on the clothing. We'll get back to that later. Anyway, secondly, because of parts that are tucked in like in the armpits or the crotch area, a bunch of wrinkles form and wait a second. So let me demonstrate how this looks. Basically, we've got two drawings here and you can clearly tell the one on the right looks fit while the other one on the left looks super loose. The thing is that before we draw anything at all, we have to draw the shape of the underlying thing beneath. So we've got a female body here and we're basically just gonna draw some clothes on her. If we want to draw something loose on the body, we're gonna have to make it big on her. So I started with drawing along the shape of her body and then when it goes down, it suddenly becomes wider than her arm, so it's now opening on that part. And here, we're not just gonna draw a straight line, we're gonna imagine that these are 3D sleeves, and of course, sleeves are circular. So that may seem super basic, and like, even a preschooler could get that, but if we practice on imagining simple shapes when we draw, I'm pretty sure that's gonna train your mind to do it unconsciously. Okay, so another thing about loose clothing is that it doesn't hug the figure. So we've got here some big boobas. It's not gonna hug that shape, but instead it's just gonna droop down, leaving a little bit of space between the skin below the chest and the shirt. We're gonna draw some lines that droop down as well. So at the bottom hem of the shirt, we're not gonna make a straight line, we're gonna make it seem as if it's hanging, if that makes sense. So if you wanna draw tight clothing, the opening will only be as big as the arm itself. The keyword here is figure hugging. So it's basically gonna take the shape of the body underneath, except there are a lot more wrinkles. And there will be a lot of wrinkles, especially on the armpits, also on the space between the two boobas. Okay, so here's a bonus tip. There's also gonna be a change in the wrinkles when certain body parts are moving. For example, the arms. Let's say the arm is being lifted here. We're gonna draw the sleeve and it droops down again because of gravity. But then we're also gonna add a bunch of wrinkles here to show that the shirt is being stretched. Also at the hem of the shirt, we're gonna make it slightly higher to show that it's being lifted. Alright, so now that we've got a basic understanding of how clothing works, let's take a look at references. Okay, so this is the most exciting part of learning because like, you don't really have to exert a lot of effort. It's got a lot more to do with analyzing than doing stuff. So in this part, we're just gonna trace purely for practice. I suggest that you guys do this if you're just a beginner. So as you can see, we've got a nice reference here. I'm tracing the clothes just to analyze a bit how it works. but aside from tracing, using a reference while drawing something is also super helpful. I mean, I use a reference 80% of the time, and when I don't use a reference in my drawings, I always end up not finishing it because it sucks. Okay, so I made another layer, and this time I'm gonna try to see how the shadows work in this thing. What I'm basically doing is that I'm imagining that this is 3D, and I'm thinking of where the shadows would be if that were the case. So obviously, since all the fabric seems to be gathering in 
in that part is gonna be a lot darker there just to show more depth into the clothing so yeah i did it a couple of times more so let's do it again but this time with just a pose i used this reference and i basically just tried to draw how her body would look without all the loose clothing and then i drew the clothes back onto her So, as you can see, there are a lot more wrinkles where stuff gets tucked in, like for example, the elbows, or near the belt. Alright, so before we color, let's have a quick recap of the stuff we learned today. So before we draw the clothing, we first have to figure out the shape beneath it. So I'm first gonna draw the pose that this dude is making. So here I'm making a draft of my drawing. Remember that loose clothing is bigger than the figure itself and tight clothes are figure hugging. The loose clothing is the polo shirt and the tight clothing is the vest that he's wearing on top. So I'm just going to refine the lines a little bit. And now we're going to get to coloring. First, we're going to put the base colors. So I recommend that you guys put these into separate layers according to the clothing type. So it's much easier to shade later on. Second, we're going to pick darker colors and put the shadows in. So if we're going to color the clothing, we have to make the wrinkles look 3D by adding shadows. So I'm actually using a reference here. And before I paint the shadows, I'm mentally breaking down the reference into simple shapes. So it would be easier to draw. As for the as we learned a while ago, this type of clothing is figure hugging. So there wouldn't be as many shadows that droop down because gravity isn't really pulling them down as much. Instead, it's just hugging the body, which means that the shadows are stretching horizontally, if that makes sense. But like the most important thing to do when drawing clothes is to use a reference. I mean, it's like that with any type of artwork. It's almost impossible to screw up if you have a basic knowledge of shapes and the handy reference. The last thing to keep in mind is to know how to use colors. You can use a color palette or you can just play around with the color wheel until you get the hang of it. But it's super important because the colors help bring out the shadows and the highlights. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. What video should I do next? Comment below. Don't forget to like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next video. Stay cool!